Hi guys, this is Math 6, Lesson 8-7. Summarize data distributions. In this lesson, we'll summarize numerical data sets. Let's start with explain it. George crosses, um, George tosses two six-sided number cubes 20 times. He records his results in a dot plot. So he's gonna roll these two dice um, 20 times, okay? It's a number cube. And his tosses have these numbers, two, four, two, five, three sixes, um, one, two, three, four, five sevens, three eights, two nines, two tens, and one twelve. These are his data. And obviously the lowest number you can get is two. The, the highest number you can get is 12 because uh, each of the cube only has six sides, right? So together they would get 12 sides. And if you roll two dice, of course, the lowest number you can get is one and one. So that's two. Okay. So A, describe the shape of the data distribution. Look at the shape. What does it look like? It looks like, it looks like it's a mountain, right? And it has like a top and then it's kind of like evened out both ways like goes up like this and then it goes down like that and it's very evenly distributed in that sense okay so how can we describe it so it looks like a hill or it looks like a bell right so it is shaped like a bell or a hill um and most suns are clustered in the center, right? There are seven with fewer, very low or very high values. So rolling a sum close to seven is, is likely and rolling a very low or very high sum is less likely looking at our data here, okay? Okay, part B, George says that he expects to roll a sum of 11 on his next roll. Do you agree? Justify your reasoning. So he's never rolled an 11 um, at all so far. So would, do you think he would roll an 11? Um, maybe it's just easier to get seven or closer to seven, not 11 instead of 11, right? So he probably would get a better chance getting other numbers than 11, but it might happen, right? So we can say George should not expect to roll R on 11 because 11 is a high sum and rolling a high sum is not is less likely than rolling um, sums closer to seven. Okay, let's look at focus on math practices. Suppose George tossed the number of cubes 20 more times and added that data to his dot plot. Would you expect the shape of the distribution to be different? Construct an argument that supports your reasoning. So he rolls 20 more times. Do you think it's gonna look much different? I mean, probability wise, you still are, gonna have more um, probability rolling the middle sum, sums in the middle rather than the extreme ones. Cause seven, you can add three and four, you can add five and two, you can add, um, yeah, you can add um, six and one and so on. But 12, you need to need to have six and six together. And two, you need to have one and one. So you need more specific rows, right? So it is less likely. Okay. So 
we can say that I would expect the shape of the data distribution to be the same because George would still talk more sums between six and eight than other sums because there are more possible combinations that give sums between six and eight than other sums. Right. Okay, so the essential question for this talk for this lesson is how can you summarize our data distribution? Look at example one. Summarize a distribution that is symmetric. A science class is testing how different types of fertilizer affect the growth of plants. The dot plot shows the heights of the plants being grown in the science lab. How can you describe the data? Look at the plants and look at their heights. How would you describe the data? To describe a data distribution or how the data values are arranged, look at the overall shape. So the data are clustered together again to the center. So the dotted red line here shows that the data are roughly symmetric. Right, it's roughly symmetric. It's not exactly the same because you don't have 13 here, but it looks roughly um, the same um, for left and right, right? So since the data are roughly symmetric, the mean is the best measure of center. So if it's symmetric, you would use the mean and figure out the average because you're centered in, in the center, right? So your mean is gonna be 16.3, so it could be about 16.3. And the mean after the deviation, you know how to find them. You subtract all the values, all the data from your mean, and that's your distance from the data, from each data to the mean. You add them and then figure out the mean for, that, for, the, for those distances away from the mean. And the data distribution, um, the, the mean after deviation is 1.16. So it's uh, so a typical height is about 1.16 centimeter from the mean. So it's going to be plus or minus 1.16 from 16.3. Okay. So usually. So if the mean is the best measure of center, then you're going to use MAD as a, as a measure of variability, just like we learned last lesson. Let's look at try it. Does the shape of the distribution uh, match what you found when you use measures of center and variability? Explain. So does this shape match? Yeah, look at the mean. 16.3 is about your center. And 1.16 away from that is like 17.46. Um, and then... Um, and 16.3 minus 1.16 is going to be 15.14. So it's about the same. You're still centered around 15 to 17, right? Around 16. So yeah, the shapes do match, right? So yes, the MAD shows that most data points fall within 1.16 centimeter of the mean, which is 16.3, which shows, which um, corresponds, or let's do a easier word, which matches um, the shape of the distribution. Okay. Convince me. What are some factors that might explain why some plants grow more or less than others in the science lab? So why are some of the plants higher? They grow taller than other plants. 
What are some factors that you can think of? Maybe they have better soil. Maybe they got more water. Maybe the position, if you notice, the plants on the, on the, in the middle get, tend to grow higher, right, taller. So maybe the position of the plant is relative to the light. Um, to the light could, be, could affect the height of the plants. So if you're in the middle, you might get more light as well. So those are factors that you could consider, right? Different soil, the amount of water, the position. The plant is relative to the light. But affect the height. You go. All right, let's look at example two. Summarize our distribution shown in the dub plot. The fat content in grams was measured for one slice, which is one eighth of a pizza, of 24 different 12 inch pizzas. The data are displayed in the dub plot. How can the data be used to describe the fat content of a slice of a pizza? So look at the distribution of the data in the dot plot here. There are gaps between six and eight and between 16 and 19, but where are the most data points? They're mostly in the center. Most data points are grouped between eight and 13. The data are not really symmetric. They're more spread out to the right and it's more clustered in the left, right? Yeah. So because they're not symmetric, your mean might not be the accurate measure. Um, you're gonna use the median and the IQR for the data distribution. So if it's not symmetric, you're gonna use the median and the IQR, okay? So the median is gonna be the middle number and the middle number is gonna be 11. And IQR is your box, your third quartile, um, minus the first quartile. So first let's figure out your median and the special points. So 20, 19, 16, six, eight, and then three, nine, here, one, two, three, and then one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, and then one, one. So it's 11 is the me median. And so median is gonna be 11, and then counting from, so you're gonna count starting from one half. If you have two median, then you can, you can start counting from that. So 11, 20, 19, 13, 3, 13, and then 16, 15, 14. So it's gonna be these two, the third quartile. So 13.5, this is gonna be your, um, this is going 13.5 is your third quartile. So I'm going to put a point, put a dot here because we're going to make a box and that's 13.5. Okay. And then here, 11, 11, 6, 8, and then 3, 11, 1, 2, 3, and then 1, 9, 1, 10, and then wait, wait, wait. Let's count this again. Uh, 11, 11 and 6. 11 and eight, 10 and eight, 10 and nine, 10 and nine, and 10 and nine. These two are gonna be the first quartile. And so 9.5 is gonna be your first quartile. So your box is over here. And then your maximum, and then your minimum, okay? And so your IQR is 13. Uh, why is it 13? Should be 13.5. Wait, let me count. Let me count again. So 11, 20, 12, 12, 19, 12, 16, 13, 15, 13, 14. Oh, it's these two. Sorry. It's these two. So your, um, Third quartile is actually 
yeah, here. So third Q is 13, and then first Q is um, 9.5. Now you subtract these two to get IQR, and that's your length of the box, 3.5. So if I content of at least has the sizes, is between 9.5 and 13, because 11 plus 3.5 is 13, 13.5. Uh, 13 wait, wait, wait. No, no, no. Your first quartile is 9.5, and your third quartile is 13. So looking at your quartile, most of your data is between first and third quartile. And then the typical size of pizza will be a fat content of your me median, 11 grams. OK. All right. And your data is distributed 3.5, mostly 3.5 away. All right. Example three, summarize the distribution shown in the box plot. The box plot displays data for the number of days. The temperature was above 80 degrees Fahrenheit for the month of the day month of July. The data were collected over a 10 year period. How can you summarize these data? So look at the box plot. Box plot tells you what information? Median, and then your third quartile, and then your first quartile, and then your minimum, and your maximum, okay? So first look at the overall shape. Where do you think most of the data is clustered to. And then you're going to find measures of center of variability. So the data is spread out to the right. Spread out means it's longer. Okay, so it is longer. It's spread out to the right, but it's clustered to the left, right? The median is the center of the data. The first quartile is three, and the third quartile is 22. So the IQR um, is going to be 22 minus three, which is 19. Okay, and that means that at least half of the data fall between three days and 22 days. And that's a big range. 25% of the years, the number of days with temperatures above 80 degrees Fahrenheit in July was three days or less. Okay. So days above 80 degrees Fahrenheit in July. The number of days with temperatures above that would be three days or less, or 25%. Because that's 25, because um, you can say that this is about half of the data, but this would be 25%, and that could also be 25%. Okay. So let's look at try it. Why does it make sense to look at the overall shape before deciding which measures to use? So looking at the, the, the shape, how does that help you? How does it help you? So the shape helps you um, which measures should be used to describe the data, which is the better data, right? Is it the mean? Is it the median? When the data are symmetric, you're going to use the mean. If it's not symmetric and they're spread out, and they have gaps or clusters, you're going to use the median, okay? So only when the data is symmetric, the mean is the best way to represent the data. So let's write that down. The overall shape helps determine which measures can be used to describe the data when the data are symmetric, you're gonna use the mean. When the data are spread out, have gaps or clusters, you're gonna use the mean. Okay, does that summarize the lesson? I think that summarizes the lesson really well. Let's look at the key concept. So the, to describe a set of data, you're gonna look at the shape and observe how the data are clustered or spread out. So this one looks very symmetric. The shape of the data is symmetric, right? And so you're gonna use uh, mean to represent this data. Mean would be, mean and the mean as the deviation, MAD would be um, the best 
um, description of this data. But if the distribution shows gaps like these, clusters or outliers like these, it's, it's going to be spread out more to one side. So it's probably spread more spread out on the right and it's more clustered towards the left. It's not exactly symmetric for this one, right? So then you're going to use the median and the inner quartile range to describe the data. Okay, so these are examples when you're going to use the mean, when you're going to use the median. All right, guys, that was lesson um, seven of topic eight, and that's the last lesson of topic eight. Great job, and topic eight is the last topic of sixth grade math. So I'm very proud of you guys. Thanks for, um, thanks for coming through. Um, you've made it. Great job. Um, and I'll see you in pre-algebra now. All right, guys. Thanks for watching. If you have any more questions, please ask Ms. King in class. Otherwise, I'll see you next year. Bye.